Hello and welcome to the program. I am Shola Shrieli. The Anti-Grazing Act appears to be at the heart of the recent violence in Benue State. But what are the provisions of the law and what is the grouse of those opposed to it? To get a proper background, Channels Television's Larry Lassisi spoke to the House of Representatives Committee Chairman on Rules and Business. He began the interview by asking Honorable Okerjev to explain the highlights of the anti-grazing law. When we came back, or rather when we started at the onset of uh, the 8th Assembly, yes. uh, about four bees came in on ranching or open grazing, four bees which were consolidated as one bee. Now the red, all red for the first time and preparations were made for second reading. And we took a look at the readings, I mean we read the constitution and other laws and it dawned on some of us who are lawyers that uh, could we really pass a bee or a law at the federal level that will guide the operations of uh, land throughout Nigeria? Considering the position of the uh, Land Use Act, that vests possession of land in the state governors. So, uh, because of that, we had to put it in the cooler, you know. And I think it was from there that the state took on the responsibility, knowing that it was the governors that had had the responsibility of uh, of, of administration of land in their in their states. And so the state assemblies did that. I'm aware that uh, uh, Ekiti did it, Benue did it, uh, Taraba did it. Uh, I'm more conversant with the Benue one because that is where I come from. Uh, the, the Benue state law was passed and signed into law on, in, in May of uh, 2017. And uh, the highlights are basically that the, you cannot do open grazing of livestock in Benue state. Uh, you, if you want to do livestock business, you have ranches and uh, you do it within that environment. Uh, the Minister of Agri Department in the Minister of Agriculture is uh, saddled with the responsibility of uh, granting permissions. You apply, you are granted permission, the governor takes a look at it, he approves it, and you uh, then put up a ranch. And the permission is normally for a year. Uh, of course, subject to renewal, and it is only for Nigerians, you know, not for foreigners. You have to show that you are a Nigerian, uh, not a foreigner, you know, and of course, like I said, it's subject to a, a year's renewal after, after, after you, you pay the fees, you are giving it for a year, uh, after the year you, nobody is allowed to go into that ranch. It, it has to be a fenced. Nobody is allowed to go into that uh, into that ranch environment unless government officials who are saddled with the responsibility of uh, going there to inspect. Other than that, it is only the rancher and his uh, uh, people or those they allow that can get into that. And the, so if you don't do that uh, and you go about, you are subject to being arrested, prosecuted and punished. You know, uh, uh, 100,000, I believe, is the fine. Uh, if you do that for one for one cow, so as many times as you are arrested, you either convicted or you are asked to pay a fine. Section 20, subsection 1, 2, and 3 of the law protects the, 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 the headers against rustling. If you rustle, you'll be arrested, uh, prosecuted, and either jailed or fined. So it's a two-way thing. Basically, the, the headers, the Fulani headsmen will claim that, oh, they are attacking because they are cattle with Russell. And so that law uh, is a two-edged, it's not just protecting people against the headers, it's also protecting the headers against uh, those who Russell their cattle. So in a nutshell, that is what the Bono law uh, is all about. There are those who are still opposed to this legislation in Benue State, and some people say that might even be the... Um, root of what appears to be the um, present issue and are calling for it to be withdrawn. What's, what's your own reaction to some of their own um, positions? As a lawmaker and a lawyer, I know that uh, before a law is passed, uh, there are three stages. You have the first reading of the law, you have the second reading, after the first reading there's public hearing, and then third reading. Uh, which uh, essentially is the passage of the bill. Yes. This, I can emphatically state, went on in the passage of this bill. The 
the public was given the opportunity. In fact, it was done in zone, not just in Marco the season. It was done in uh, Benue has three senatorial districts. It was done in all the senatorial districts. So the public was afforded the opportunity and the privilege to participate actively in the passage of this bill. What one sees happening is that basically the, the headers who are resident in Benue were all involved. I'm aware that even after the passage of the bill, before the signing, the governor called meetings of this uh, headers association in Benue, and they appear to do even issue statements. They appear to, you know, be at home with the passage of the law. But unfortunately, what is happening now is that you have these Fulani headsmen who are not even indigenous of Nigeria, who come in and do as they wish, because uh, you know before before the coming of this uh, killer headsmen, we used to have uh, Fulanis around, but these ones, unfortunately, the ones in Nigeria appear to have embraced them uh, because of the, uh, they, are kid, they are kid and king. They appear to have embraced them without uh, this. You no, know, you don't prefer your countrymen against invaders just because they, they share the same cultural or uh, you know, tribal affinity. But well, that is what one sees happening. It is not the headers, Fulani headsmen in Benue that are making all this noise. It is those who are even outside that are making the noise. But to ask, answer your question pointedly, the process was open. All that wanted to participate in the law-making process were allowed to make their input. And after the law was signed in May of 2017, a, a grace of six months was given to explain it to all stakeholders, including those outside who are now shouting. They were called in, and the law was explained to them. And then they appeared to have uh, gone Arrested. along with it, only for after the, 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 the commencement of of the law you to have this thing happening. And they have been issuing threats. The Miata Mieti Alab group uh, on the 23rd of October had a press conference, what they call a world press conference, and said that they will mobilize all flying headsmen across the country to converge on Benue soil to resist the law. Why? What's that, their position? Why do they want to oppose the law? And before then, they had already gone to court. They had gone to court to challenge the law. So why would you go to court and then decide to take the laws into your hands? I may not know the details of, of, of what, uh, as far as these people are concerned, apparently they don't even want any, any restriction on the movements of their cattle, irrespective of the fact that, the fact that it encroaches on that people's uh, way of livelihood. You know? So they went to court, and yet this conference took place that they were going to converge physically on Burnley land and resist the, the, the... And people raised objections. The social cultural organizations of the ma three major tribes in Benue came to Abuja with a petition that look, from the body language and the utterances of these people, Benue is under imminent attack. Nothing was done until this happened. If you were to look at what's happening now, because it even appears right now, the legislation itself to implement it is not going as easily as it would. What do you see as some of those limitations? Well, those limitations, the truth is that uh, since you don't have state police, you will have to rely on the federal uh, security agencies to implement a law. And there appears to be no political will on the part of the federal authorities to cooperate when it comes to this, the issue of Fulani Hesman. I mean, take a, take a look at what has just happened after the killings. One expected decisive action from the federal authorities. But the president, in my opinion, did not rise up to the occasion, you know. So until we have that, and, 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 and you hear the statement that the, attorney, uh, the Inspector General issued, that it was a communal clash. Now, public opinion has forced him to apologize over that, but it was the most insensitive statement to have made. So when you have the, uh, the security chief making that statement, it shows you that uh, there, will, there will be no cooperation from the police authorities. I mean, we cannot uh, take laws into our hand. We have made a law. It, it, and the position of the law is that no matter how stupid you think the law is, it is the law until it's set aside, until the courts set it aside. And we have a responsibility to uh, you know, respect that law. But when you have those who are supposed to implement the law, the police, you know, approaching it from a, like a basical attitude, I mean, it means we are in trouble. So there is no political will on the part of the federal authorities to ensure the implementation of the law. That is the major uh, hurdle, in my opinion, that this law faces. What is the way forward on this issue? The way forward uh, is not from 
the domain of law. The way forward is on the political terrain. I've always been asking the president to have political will to tackle this issue. It's a security issue. The, the legality part is what has happened. happened. The, the laws, laws that, that have been put in place. place. And, and uh, people, people should learn, learn if you want to have a decent society, you should learn to obey the laws of the land. land. If we, these, these people have gone to court, court. Let's, let, let them await the outcome, outcome of the court cases that they have uh, put, uh, they, 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 have, they have filed. If at the end of the day the court says, oh, this is not right, they will put it aside and we'll go back to status quo.